So a couple people asked me what I'm using to make the actual sound and how I'm microtuning it to the Bolin Pierce scale. Normally I just use a synthesizer and you can remap the slope of the keyboard, how much the keyboard modulates the pitch. So normally when you play up a keyboard it modulates the pitch 100 cents per semitone. You could change that to anything, say 146 cents per semitone for the Bull and Pierce scale. What I'm using, since I don't really have a keyboard handy right now, is this program called Magic Max Microtuner. It's named after the father of computer music, Max Matthews. It allows you to open up any number of microtuning maps, their MTX files. It just so happens to have all these versions of the Bull and Pierce scale. So I chose the equal tempered version, and you can see it shows the MIDI note number the note name where it would be on a piano keyboard and you can see the stripes where it would correspond to the black and white keys of the piano and it shows the frequency in hertz to a number of decimal places so it's pretty accurate pretty cool and it allows you to trigger some sounds right now I'm just having it trigger some general MIDI sounds that's why it sounds pretty bad <laughs> But you can send it to trigger any number of other sounds. I could send this to the IAC driver and have it trigger some other software. I haven't tried that yet, though. So I think it's a pretty cool program. And I'll probably use this to explore some other tunings. Rah! There's Baloney Monster! I know you're dying to see Baloney in action, and don't worry, we'll be chatting with the camera in just a few minutes. But for now, I'm going to show some colorful charts. It has to do with my research adventures at NYU and how it led me to choose lambda mode in the Bull and Pierce scale as the reference mode of choice, which is what I base this axis key arrangement on. When I did a research paper on the Bull and Pierce scale at NYU in 2001, I wanted to base my study on previous research that Heinz Bolin and John Pierce and Max Matthews and Dr. Bolin J had already worked out. However, all anyone had published to my knowledge were these seven modes shown here, in no particular order. And the two main triads that the tuning was originally derived from, the wide triad and the narrow triad. I noticed that lambda mode was referenced more than the others. I found a set of key signatures for it, for instance, but no specific reference was ever made, claiming that it was the reference mode of choice. Also, I could see that the original keyboard that Heinz Bolin built in the early 70s was not referencing lambda mode. I befriended Heinz over email at the time and asked him about this, and he couldn't remember offhand which mode it was referencing, but it would have been one of the mole or dir modes that he originally came up with. He said not to worry about it and go with whichever mode seemed most suitable, and agreed that lambda might very well be the best choice. I think we figured out which mode his keyboard was referencing, but I promptly forgot as I continued to focus on Lambda and also take a good look at all the others and make sure there weren't any better ones. After studying the modes on my own, I could see why Lambda was looked at more. I eventually arrived at the conclusion that it was one of the best choices for the main tonic mode because of several reasons. Number one, it included all five of the scale intervals needed to make up the wide and narrow triads. I found it contained a larger variety of pleasing chords than the other modes. It was one of the top two choices in a listening test I did as part of my research. And it makes a nice looking keyboard with groups of four evenly spaced black notes. Also, as you'll see, if lambda mode is the reference mode of choice, most of the other modes, with the exception of Dir2 and Gamma, fit as secondary modes on the white keys. There's no way to play Dir2 or Gamma on a Lambda keyboard without including black notes. So as you can see, that leaves four keys that don't have a mode associated with them. There's no mode that would be all the white notes from D to D, or F to F, or H to H, or B to B. So at this point, they were just kind of empty modes and I left question marks where those spaces were but at least had the other modes put into an order and was able to set aside Dir2 and Gamma as kind of modes that wouldn't fall into this main family. Okay so by the time I figured all of this out I had already come up with two new modes. The modes I've shown so far all follow a strict set of rules but the ones I came up with were arrived at differently. So in addition to exploring all possible harmonic sounding chords in each of the seven modes, mainly lambda mode, I had also mapped out a bunch of chord progressions that I came up with purely by ear. 
I noticed that if I just slightly modified the mole 1 and mole 2 modes, the new modes would contain most of the notes I used in my chord progressions. However, I didn't have high hopes for them since they were each missing at least two of the main triad scale degrees, and I later realized I had broken a rule regarding symmetrical pentachords. What was important to me, though, was to have a mode that contained most of the notes from my chord progressions that I found pleasing to my ear. And, miraculously, two of the modes I came up with fit into two of the four empty slots. This was quite a coincidence, I thought, and it made me happy that I found a home for my modes. I classified these modes as Pierce 2 and Delta 2 since they most closely resembled the Mole 2 Pierce and Mole 1 Delta modes. When Heinz Boland saw my research, he renamed my Pierce 2 and Delta 2 modes Walker 1 and Walker 2, and also named the two missing modes that I hadn't filled in yet, Walker A and Walker B. Yay! At least temporarily until we think of better names. Heinz Bullen created this wheel with a newly ordered family of lambda modes and put it on his official Bullen Pierce website. I showed this to Max Matthews when I was visiting him at Stanford and he thought it was neat. Dr. Bullen J likes to poke fun at me for having four modes in my name. <laughs> but he's allowed to poke fun at me. He's the one who introduced me to the tuning in the first place in 1991, so I might not even know about it if it weren't for him. So, I just spent a million years making a long story short explaining to you why I had decided to use lambda mode in the Bolin and Pierce scale on this Axis keyboard. In short, it determined where I would put the black keys. Now, I will spend some time showcasing some loverly chords in the Bolin and Pierce scale and also explain as I go why I've decided not to use lambda key arrangement after all. Oh dear. As you can see, this looks a little different than it did this whole time I've been talking. So you can see the A sharp is scooted over to the B. And other than that, it's the same. And I'll show you some chords and I'll explain as I go. I started off by just making sure I had a good handle on exactly where the wide chord was and the narrow chord. Like this, that's the wide chord. don't really sound like major or minor or anything very profound just on their own out of context. Um, so I came up with some chords using this regular keyboard with a 12 tone tuning as a reference. Now I'm not sure if this is the right approach. This is just approach, an approach I'm trying. Um, because mm -hmm. This tuning could be just so entirely different than the 12th tone tuning that it might be a bad idea to use that as a reference. However, might as well do this as an experiment because if it could somehow mimic harmonic movements such as resolving down a fifth and maybe the idea of mi major and minor, stuff like that, it might catch on and resonate with people a little bit better. But that, like I said, that might not be the best way to think about it. But I have noticed, you know, all my years of playing with this tuning, that there is a kind of something that sounds like a major chord. Now, if you have acute ears, you will notice something about it. Right? This is a, in a different octave than these are. Now, we're going to remember in the course of this discussion that there are no octaves in the Bowen Pierce scale. So when I say octaves, um, I'm literally talking about octaves, whereas this is normally... <laughs> that was a good stretch, Bonnie. Here, okay, here's a major chord. This is this. See how far apart that is? These are in a different octave, as you can see. I rearrange this strip back to lambda mode just because I was trying to demonstrate what caused me to rethink the keys and how they're arranged. That first major chord, this was a black note. If we look at it here, see how it's black? If you're really going to use this chord a lot, it kind of makes sense to use this mode as opposed to this mode. Want to listen to the difference between the two modes? The only difference is 
when you get to the top. She's the very last note. Lambda plays this, and the other one plays this. Ah, I'm torn. Um, I like the way this looks better, which it almost might be worth it for this particular, um, for the axis, because unless I can do that crazy fantasy keyboard thing I wanted to do where the hexagons are the other way, this is pretty good. Good enough for this. Having these all together kind of confuses my eye. It's kind of hard to tell when they, which is which. This is real clear because you can tell from this triton to this triton, these are the ones that go with it. Here, it's like which, where did the octaves or triton's start and stop? It's, it's harder to see. I think I want to go with this one.